Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, this chance to look at your word this morning. Uh, we pray, Lord, that as you see us, Lord, as a masterpiece that you are working on, Lord, let us be a canvas that you can paint on. Mm-hmm. We just pray that you would we'd let, set our worries down, Lord, and just open up our hearts and our minds and our souls to you this morning. We pray that you use Pastor Izzy now to speak to each one of us, to encourage us for this coming week, Lord, and for the appointments you have for us. We ask that now in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians 11. Paul started off last week in chapter one, uh, chapter, verse 1 of this chapter. He said, be an imitator of me as I am what? An imitator of who? Christ. Of Christ. And truly, we went in depth on that last week. How important is it for us to be imitators of Jesus? I mean, that's what, that's what being a Christian is all about. It's, it's just, you know... That simple thing that the kids have made into a bracelet, WWJD, what would Jesus do? When you don't know how to do your Christian faith, you really need to just ask that question. What would, what would Jesus do right now? And now, last week I mentioned Paul was, Paul was the pastor who planted the church at Corinth. He pastored that work on his second missionary journey as a church plant, and he stayed a year and a half teaching them the gospel. So when he's writing this letter, he's actually writing to answer questions. They had some, some problems going on. And we saw earlier in the, in the book, he said, concerning the things what you guys wrote to me about, you know, they had questions about the faith, as we all do. We think about, these are people that have only been Christians at the most. If they were saved right when Paul got there, how old are they in Christ? A year and a half. You know, maybe a couple extra months because the letter had, got to, had to travel to him, and he had to write back. So we'll give him maybe two years. How many of you were mature in your Christian faith at two years in Christ? Just rocking it solid, right? No problems. <laughs> had it down, you know. No, we, we're just, at two years old, just think of a baby. At two years old, we're just beginning to learn certain skills that, you know, we, we you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of learning curves going on. And we forget running a race. We're like getting just used to walking, if we're walking, you know. I mean, hopefully by then we are, but we're a little still, you know, do the thing that the babies do. And, you know, when, when people are new Christians, unfortunately, they're, they have people watching them, and they, the, world is not, the world does not view us correctly. The world just says, oh, you say you're a Christian? Well, then why aren't you perfect like Jesus? And you're like, because I'm new at this, okay? I'm just learning. And you don't start off doing it perfect, do you? But we have, we have a perfect model to use. The, we learn so good by example. Like I said last week, we have the Lord as our example. So when we don't know what to do, we just need to look to him and say, okay, what would he do? And Paul, Paul, knowing that these new Christians didn't, have it down, didn't know how to do it, he tells them, just imitate me. You don't know how to do it? Be an imitator of me as I am an imitator of Christ. I've been doing this a while. I'll just show you. Now, last week I pointed out, that's a, how many of you would do that for somebody if they were new in the Lord? you say, oh, no problem. Just copy me. Just hang with me. Shadow me. You can stay with me all the time. 24-7. See, everything I do, you'll, you'll, you'll see exactly how to be a Christian. Some of you are shaking your head like, no, thank you, Pastor. I'll, I'll, I'll take them for a couple of minutes once a week or, you know, an hour or two. I'll put my best game face on. I'll act like a Christian for, you know, a lot, well, I can do it for maybe, some of you are like going, don't stretch it, you know, half a day. But what if you really had a new Christian shadow you all day, night, see how you live your Christianity all the time? Could you set an example? Because this is what Paul just said to the church. You don't know how to do it? Imitate me as I imitate Christ. And he wasn't ashamed to say, you can be around me all the time. He had men that traveled with him, traveling companions, that he showed them how to be a Christian. Now, I don't know about you, but that's my kind of, for, for me, that's my kind of uh, spiritual person that I like to learn from. 
I don't like guys that say, do what I say, but not as I do. I like the guys that are rubber meets the road. They're like, look, you don't know how to do it. Come on, follow me. I'll, I'll show you how to do it. I learn well from that. Now, Paul, he has to remind them next, in the next verse, that he had shown them these things. You know, he had sh gave them examples, and he had taught them the different traditions of the faith. Now, remember, Christianity at this point is really young. So when we say the, the things of the faith that, that he was passing on to them, they were learning, like, Paul, as we're going to see next week, he's going to talk about how he learned to take the Lord's Supper. He, he learned it from the Lord. Now you say, when was Paul? You know, that's a good question. When was Paul with Jesus that he learned about the Lord's Supper? Was he at the, was he at the Last Supper? Was Paul the Apostle one of the 12 guys? No. His name was Saul back then, and he was out actually persecuting. He would be one of the persecutors of the faith. But the Lord is going to get his attention. And sometime in that time when he spent time with the Lord, he had a real... I mean, you talk about eye-opening. It was actually physically eye-blinding. The Lord shone brighter than the sun at high noon, blinded him. He couldn't see a thing, and it says he had to be led by the hand into the town, and the Lord said for the next three days, he said, Saul, Saul, I'm going to show you what you will suffer for my namesake. But I know, because I read ahead, you can too, in 1 Corinthians 11, he says, but I receive from the Lord. This what I deliver to you, that in the night in which the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he, he, he blessed, he said, this is my body, right, which is broken for you. Now, next week, we'll celebrate communion together. Sorry, Sharon, we were going to do it for you this week. It's her four-year anniversary of coming to church. She was like, can we do it on my anniversary of coming? I'm like, that's pretty good, you know. We get, we get these ones that are, now, now I know she's been doing this for four years at least, so, so she can probably take someone and say, okay, I'll show you how to do it. At least, at least to, what we have to be careful to do is to qualify. If you're going to tell someone, copy me as I'm copying the Lord, make sure you're humble enough to say, I don't have it all down yet. Because they're going to see you make mistakes. It's how do you handle the mistakes when they happen. Can you show grace in action when you help someone like even see you make a mistake and then have to pick up and brush off and keep going? Sure. It's really one of the best ways to teach perseverance to our children is when they see us make a mistake, they see us fall down, they see us get up, brush off, and, and, and you know, if we, if we did something wrong, sorry about that, that's not what I intended to do, but I'm going to push on. We don't just go, I made a mistake, I fell down, I'm never going to try again. You ever seen a baby do that? They, they, try to, they try to get up and they pull on the couch and they're trying to stand and it's, they've never done it before. And they fall down. And then they go, Wee! never doing that again. Is that what they do? No, oh, man, those little buggers, they just grab the couch again. Start pulling. I mean, they don't just go, I quit because I didn't succeed the first time. Some of you Christians, by the way, are too wimpy. You quit too easy. I'm just telling you, in the spiritual journey that you're going through, you, you, you talk to Maynard. He's been around a while. You don't just quit, do you, Maynard? You've got to keep going. you got to get, get around the older guys that have some perseverance. They'll show you that it, you don't just roll over and go, eh, I quit. you got to, you got to, you just go at it again. And that's part of what we, what we demonstrate. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.